Here's the official family, or shall we call it the team photo. Hopefully, these are all very familiar faces to you by this time. Right there in the center, Scott Russell and Andy Petrillo. You join them every weekend on the road to the Olympic Games. Scott is the prime time host. Andy is the morning host for uh, Olympic coverage. You see there on the left, Alexandre Despati, two-time Olympic silver medalist, three-time world champion. I'll tell you more about him, too. You know, some, some of us in news get an interesting opportunity to join the sports team. The Nationals' Andrew Chang is part of the team. I'm there on the right Delighted to be joining the sports team on this particular game's coverage. And they're just to my left. You know her so well, too, in all sorts of capacities. As an Olympian, as a world champion, and part of the CBC Sports broadcast team, now soon to be part of the CBC hosting team, Perdita Felicien. Good morning. Welcome. And congratulations. Thank you, Heather. You know, I was looking at that lineup, and I'm like, oh, we're so good looking. We're so polished. I mean, I'm so... <laughs> Proud. I'm so proud. I'm so excited. Like, you, you got the scoop. You know that, right? I know. We're 20 minutes ahead of everybody. Well, we should be. It's our big story. So there we are. So you're in that team. You're beside me. But really, your partner on air is Andrew Chang, the Nationals co-host Andrew Chang. Going to be uh, hosting Tokyo Today, I know is the name of your show, from noon to 6 p.m. Any details that you can share? Yeah, so we we are um, going to bring you athlete profiles, athlete interviews. Of course, I'll be there, you know, seven, eight years now as a trained reporter myself, but really to add the athlete inside the athlete perspective. So all the things that you'll be watching live in prime tide, prime time, Andrew and I will be dissecting and giving you the what, who, when, why, all, all the details. So I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I'm also nervous, Heather. I'm going to ask you for some tips, I'll be honest. Oh, I'm happy <laughs> to share. But don't just talk about prime time because... My hours, <laughs> I'm midnight to six in the morning, which you might say, that's crazy. We already get up really early. But the fact is, with Tokyo being 13 hours ahead, there's a lot of live sports. So you can look ahead to some of the things that I'll be talking about, too, okay? We'll have I'll a deal. But yeah. when, in your case, as you tap into such a storied career, as an athlete, as you said, as a, as a commentator for some of the live action for many years for Olympic coverage, and now a full-fledged host... Bringing all of that to bear, um, what does that varied experience contribute to how you approach this kind of thing? You know, I've been in the situation where, you know, I've tasted the high of sport, I've tasted the low of sport. As a broadcaster, I've been in the mix zone where an athlete, you know, has been supposed to win or do something well, Heather, and they scoot past me in the mix zone. They literally have run from me because they don't want to answer the questions. So I think I've I've had the full scope, the full range, right? Mm -hmm. So if an athlete has had a really great day, I can I can take you there. If they've had a really bad day or a mixed day, I really can give you the insight and the perspective to what that that means. I'll be frank, I'll be candid. Uh, I'll probably be a little bit goofy too, because you know me. But I really, really <laughs> want Canadians to have the Canadian context to these stories that we were telling. And it's such an unprecedented time in human history, of course. Well, that's the thing. I mean, all the controversy, all the questions, all the safety issues, at the core of it is the athlete's story. And nobody can appreciate that better than you can. So as you say, take me there, because I'm wondering. I was talking about this with Marnie McBean yesterday, the chef de mission for Team Canada this time around, about what it must be like for the Canadian athletes training now, still so many things up in the air about these games, the schedule, who's qualifying. There's no real way to even measure where they sit internationally because there have been so few test events and qualifiers. I mean, what must that be like, Perdita? You know, I have some really close friends who are Olympians, like, clearly, who are still active, still competing, will check in from time to time. Heather, they're stressed. They're stressed. They're under tremendous pressure. They can handle the pressure of having to perform. They can handle the pressure of having to win medals. Fine. It is the emotional toll, it's the uncertainty, it's the unknown. And here's the thing, even as our athletes arrive into Tokyo, it's gonna look very different from what we're used to. I'm, you know, gonna be going into my sixth year and, you know, you get into the Olympics, there is no quarantine, there is no mandatory vaccination. As soon as you are done, you have to leave within 48 hours. Um, most likely we'll see countries maybe dropping out, athletes dropping out. There is so much left to be figured out mm -hmm. that our athletes are feeling that. And here's the thing, it's what you said. They can't see their coaches in the same way. They can't necessarily get the physiotherapy. Their, their venues are completely closed. You can't travel and qualify. 
So for them, they're so much up in the air, and it's, it's a huge burden on them and their families. Yeah, and they can't even compete in front of their families and loved ones because that has been barred. Travelers from out of country not allowed to attend the game. So that's definitely something that we're going to be watching. I do want to make sure I ask you, though, Devin Haru was in yesterday uh, with me, Perdita, and he's going to be over there in Tokyo. And he was mm -hmm. telling me we need to be watching the storylines from Canada's female athletes. Canada's projected to win 20 medals, 19 of which are supposed to be coming, according to the experts, from women. Now that is something we're going to be uh, really watching closely. Yeah, well, women, you know, won all the medals in 2016, right? Women, Canadian women really put us on the map. Here's what I will say about, you know, a lot of my fellow Olympians who are women who are training right now, they are so strong, they are so determined. Um, one of the, the duos that I'm really, really keen to watch is Melissa Jimena Paredes and Sarah Pavin. They're the reigning world champions in, in, in beach volleyball. I mean, their, their ability to just command uh, a competition, a tournament. I mean, they're going to Tokyo and it is theirs for the taking, right? I really truly believe that um, women are gonna lead Canadians in Tokyo, right? This is what they did in 2016 and I have no doubts that they'll repeat. But Heather, I will say this, this is the hardest Olympics I've ever had to predict, right? I love a prediction. I love to say, okay, Andre's gonna get this, Damian Warner's gonna get that in track and field. I really can't call it because we've hardly seen them compete in a year. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see. We will. It'll be uh, a lot of fun to share that journey with you. Perdita, thanks for the time today. Uh, and Perdita Felicien, you'll be seeing a whole lot more of when we begin to broadcast.